So in this video we're going to focus on Visio's status bar and learn how to pan and zoom a drawing using the pan and zoom window which you will also find in the status bar. And all that stuff lives down here at the bottom of the window but you don't see anything until you open a new drawing. So let's go to the backstage area, click on file, click on new, and we'll use a pre-built sample drawing so we have something to look at with having to create it from scratch. So other ways to get started down at the bottom of our template gallery, just click, click on sample drawings, double click on IT asset management, and we get a fresh copy of a drawing. Now you can tell it's a copy because it says drawing six, you know, maybe one, two, or three in your case. That means it hasn't been saved because it doesn't have a useful name, and that means we can do whatever we want to this drawing without the fear of irreversibly damaging something. Now I'm going to close the external data window here because we don't really talk about this till chapter 7, so pretend it never happened. And I'm going to collapse the, the stencil window here on the left so we have more space to look at. So now the status bar is starting to show some things, and you can see that we've got three page tabs plus a background pa page. So this document has three pages, and as I switch from page to page, the status bar tells me that I'm on page 2 of 3, I'm on page 3 of 3, and I can also click this little area to get a page chooser so I can jump from topology to row one, rack one. Really good stuff if you have lots and lots of page tabs and you don't want to push these buttons till your fingers get sore. You can just jump straight to them with this nice little dialog. So let's use it to go back to page one and select a shape in the window. Now when I do that, you can see the status bar changes slightly and you see the width of the shape, the height of the shape, and the angle. If I rotate the shape, you can see the angle is actually changing as I do that. And we've got the language here. So this probably applies to spell checking and things like that, and date settings, things like that. I'm using US English. Good stuff. This is a macro recorder button. We'll talk about that in chapter 11. But we're still in chapter 1, so let's just move on to the right on the status bar. So this is the normal view. If I click the next button, we've got the full screen. We'll come back to that in a second. And here's the zoom control that we can even use the plus and minus buttons to move or just grab the slider. Not too hard to figure out, but it's pretty responsive. Really nice way to move around to different areas in your drawing. You can use the scroll bars to move once you've zoomed in too far, but it gets better than that. We've got the fit to page once we've zoomed in too much and forgotten how to get back and we get tired of moving the status bar. If you've gone way in and way over and you just want to view the whole drawing again, click the fit to page to current window. I don't think you can see the tool tip down there. It's off the video. It says fit page to current window and you get back to where you started and can start afresh. There is also a specific zoom level, you click this button here with the percent and you can type in anything you want or select one of the presets. You can see it says page, which means we're actually uh, zoomed to fit the page, which was the, the button we clicked down here. But you can type in, uh, let's say 120%, hit OK, and it zooms us in a little bit larger than 100%. You can see Visio sort of fudged my 120% and made it 125. So let's fit the page again. And let's try out full screen view, which is this little slide projector icon here. And when I click that, my entire screen is filled up. Now it's as bigger than the video screen that you're looking at, but you can tell this is this is pretty big. It's a non-interactive screen. I can't select shapes or move them at all. It's really like a PowerPoint slide. And what happens if I click anywhere, we actually move through the pages just as though this was a PowerPoint presentation. So if you've done a lot of graphics in Visio, instead of copying and pasting them over to PowerPoint, just just do the PowerPoint presentation inside of Visio. To go back a slide, you can right-click anywhere on the page and choose Previous Page. Right-click again. I can go to any page directly if I want to go back and discuss something. And I can also exit the full screen mode by clicking Close or just hit the Escape key. I'm a keyboard guy, so I'm going to just push, push Escape right now and back I come. The last little bit we want to talk about is the pan and zoom window, which is this magnifying glass icon. You click on that and you get this funny little anchor bar or task pane as they call it now. You can 
You can pull the window off and float it anywhere you want. You can even float it outside of Visio. You can dock it to a side, but because of the way, because it's shaped like a page, you don't really need to dock. It's better just to anchor it to a side. And when you anchor it, you can actually click this little pin icon and it'll disappear when you don't use it for a while. It'll reappear when you mouse over it. So you can preserve some screen real estate that way. You can make it bigger if you want to, but at some point it's almost as big as the drawing and you're not really getting much gain for, from it. So now this has also a zoomer. It zooms in and out just like the status bar does. Oops, let's click that on. And you'll notice that when I zoom in, this red square shows up. When I zoom out, it's not there. If I click and drag, I also can create the red square. And what the red square is, is a one-to-one -one correspondence with what's shown in the drawing window itself. Now I can drag this red square around to pan freely. I can zoom in by taking a corner handle and making the square smaller. It's actually a rectangle, isn't it? Uh, the square will, the rectangle will match the, the shape of your drawing window. So I can check out all the server equipment. If I want to zoom out a little bit, I can do that. So if you like, if it, this, this makes more sense to some people. It's this really graphical way of panning and zooming. I think it's pretty slick, and you also have an overview of your drawing at all times, so it's pretty nice. I personally use the keyboard shortcuts discussed at the end of chapter one to zoom in and out and pan, because I think they're more natural, but this is pretty. This is a pretty cool feature too. So I hope that's useful for you. Uh, one more little thing right here, if you've got lots of documents open, the last little icon in the status bar will allow you to jump to different drawings. We've only got one open right now, but check that out as well if, in case you get three or four drawings open and you're, you've kind of lost the windows. This is a quick way to jump between windows as well. But we've got the status bar all down here, the pan and zoom window with its hide and show features and the zooming controls and the full screen view all right down in the status bar. Lots of powerful controls here for you to help you get good views of your Visio drawing and good information about what the shapes contain. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.